Hi guys, um, this is Joel and I was going to do another book review. Um, this book is The Dominion of the Dead uh, by Robert Pogue Harrison. Uh, I believe that he is a language professor of Italian. Yeah, he's an Italian language professor. Um, but he is very interested in kind of philosophy, poetry, liberal arts stuff. So this book is kind of not quite in the realm of philosophy, not quite in the realm of like a Jungian or mythological academic comparative religion type lens, and it's not quite in the realm of like anthropology. It's almost just kind of like a social anthropology, history, cultural study that kind of begs and borrows and steals from a lot of different disciplines. Um, he really likes philosophers. There's a lot of Vico that comes up in this, but unlike a lot of people that do philosophy, it's not... Um, <sighs> I feel like a lot of people that are super into a lot of uh, philosophy require you to know a ton about it, and it's sometimes kind of hard to get into. Um, he doesn't dumb anything down, but he also doesn't go into theory for theory's sake. And a lot of those books just have like an index where it's like, okay, before we can start, let's classify our terms. Now, like this person, and you feel like you're reading that every time you try and read one of those kind of like survey type books. This book is just beautiful to read. I mean, you don't even have to read it in order. You could almost pick up at any point in the book and just start reading, and it has a poetry um, that's just gorgeous. Uh, he Even his introduction, he starts describing that his book is a net, not a cloth, and the way that a lot of writers write is so that they can kind of connect everything for you in this cloth, and then the cloth is a tapestry that's pretty, but he wants to write something that's a net where there's just these points that are in a pattern but it's up to you to make those connections and to kind of weave the net into the cloth and it's just like you know this is an introduction to a book it's not really supposed to be this good um but the premise of the book is that death is an awareness of death kind of permeates a lot of human behavior a lot of psychology a lot of culture um probably more than any force that exists and it's an unconscious awareness of death that we have and so we're always sort of striving against this fear of meaninglessness, of not mattering. And he goes through a whole lot of different elements of human behavior. And, and so, for example, like one chapter is about uh, the language and the way that language uh, is sort of referential. And he begins by talking about how social animals, when they die are incredibly vocal around death that's kind of when you know that's kind of when you know that an animal is a social animal is when they're recognizing that another animal has died instead of just going on and that when you look at monkeys and these things that's when they make these calls and these vocalizations and so probably language itself came from this acknowledgement of death because that's when animals were being vocal it's when they're speaking and then all of a sudden those sounds t start to take on another type of meaning um, in another chapter, he's talking about architecture and design, and he says, you know, that the Romans had a fire for the penates, like the, the spirits of the home, in the hearth, and that all of the architecture, because of your ancestral dead, it had to be referencing that object built around it. And that even though we don't have that understanding anymore, we still keep our design language with everything facing the hearth. You don't block the hearth. That There's kind of a... Um, I don't know the architecture term, but it's it's a reference point, and then he goes on from there. And I mean, it, it would be very hard to summarize all of the things in the book, but it's such a pretty book. This is actually my third copy of this book. I discovered it in college when I was doing my Swanee makes you do like a mini thesis called a uh, comp in order to leave, and I ended up reading this. He also references all of these beautiful authors and poets in this index, and then has a list of where you can find their books. So it turned me on to a ton of other books. But I ended up reading this book so many times in the past, I guess, 12 years that it fell apart three times. This is my third copy. Um, just spine broken, you know, whatever. So I just got this one from Amazon and I thought that I should do a review of it. I really love it. Um, it probably is one of my favorite books. Uh, and he's a really beautiful writer. There's a couple others. I think this is probably the best one. I haven't read Gardens yet, but um, we will see. Uh, we'll, uh, thanks for listening. Take care.